We're starting with the homework that you had to do last night. It was the bottom of page 10, the top of page 11. Um, starting off, we only briefly mentioned this yesterday. Do you guys remember what the ozone protects us from? Which one of these? This is just a random fact that might be helpful to know. Do you know, Remy? One. Yeah, it is UV light, the ultraviolet. So I'm not by the looks of everybody changing their answer, maybe we didn't mention that yesterday. So fun fact, the ozone layer protects us from UV light. That is why um, it, it gets brought up is because you guys get directly affected by um, getting sun, uh, getting overly sunburns or suntan, which could like, yes, lead to skin cancer. So that is why the ozone layer is important. Um, now, the rest of these were straight off the reference table. So which one of these has the shortest wavelength? Again, show up fingers just like we did yesterday. Shortest wavelength. Remy, you weren't even here. How do you know? Where, you're just guessing. Okay, don't just guess. So if you had had your reference table out, you probably could have figured it out real quickly. So yeah, the shortest, they get shorter as you go to the left. So gamma rays are the shortest. So those of you who did it, it looks like you got that right. Uh, that's gamma rays. Now, hey, Remy, the next question is which one has the longest? I'll put the reference table up there for you. Don't shout it out. I want to hear from everybody which one is the longest. Uh, show of fingers. Yep, all of you got that one right. Um, now, this question four, this kind of is what we were talking about yesterday about certain uh, waves not even making it to Earth. Um, here they set up, it's a weird little graph, and it does tell you in the reading that it says the shaded portion of the diagram shows the approximate amount of each type actually reaching Earth's surface. So you see that there's nothing shaded for gamma. What does that mean about gamma? Come on, tell me about poor old gamma here. What's happening? Because there's nothing shaded. It doesn't reach Earth. So our atmosphere filters out that gamma rays. It doesn't let that teeny tiny little wave through. Same with x-rays. There's nothing in there. Same with radio waves. Nothing in there. Now there's a teeny tiny bit for ultraviolet, teeny tiny bit for infrared, a significant chunk for visible. So when you read through the answers, which one did you pick as the correct answer that goes with this list? Yes, number three. Visible light makes up the greatest amount of electromagnetic energy reaching Earth. Perfect. And then the only other one you had to do, because I told you to skip number six, um, what's the difference then between visible and infrared and ultraviolet? Uh, what'd you pick? Yuppers, that is just the wavelength. So remember, again, this reference table is showing the wavelength. So ultraviolet, visible, and infrared. Only thing that makes them different is ultraviolet is the smallest, visible has the medium wavelength, and infrared has the longest of those three. Perfect. Do I need to cover anything else about that reference table? No? Okay, good. I didn't think I was going to have to. Um, if you happen to read question six, they do actually have lengths for those waves, but we don't have to worry about that in this class. If you go on in science, they will uh, show you reference tables that give actual numbers for the waves, but not this year. So then I think a good place to continue on is right here on the bottom of the page. Um, two days ago, three maybe now? No, two. We talked about the different types of radiation coming into, or we talked about the two different kinds of, where am I going with this? Let me start over again. Three days ago, we talked about the different types of energy, internal and external. And we talked about external, which comes from, where does external energy come from? Sun. The sun. External energy comes from the sun, but there are some things that control how much energy we get from the sun. Um, are we getting a lot of energy from the sun today? No, not that much. What's going on today? Right. It's cloudy and rainy. So on cloudy days, a lot of sun can't get through. What are some other things that will control how much energy gets to us from the sun? There's two more. Yeah, do you remember? Um, with the time. Yeah, the amount of time the sun is out. 
So if the sun is out for 14 hours, we're going to get more energy from the sun if the sun was only out for eight hours. So the amount of time the sun is out controls how much we get. And there was one more. Does anybody remember? <clears throat> Know what that means up there? No, no, on the screen. Yeah, how high the sun is up in the sky. So hopefully you guys know how's the, how does that energy from the sun feel in the middle of the day compared to the morning? More intense in the middle of the day. You got it. So that's what we're going to be focusing in on today is just um, the angle of insulation. It's there at the bottom of page 11 if you don't already have that out. Let's pick it up right there. So just a reminder that the angle of insulation is, oops, where'd it go? Angle of insulation is the altitude of the sun over the horizon measured in degrees. Go ahead and add that in. Second bullet does say the highest altitude is 90 degrees, which is directly in. What kind of degrees am I talking about here, you think? Yeah, this is the angles degree. So like in geometry, when you measure a right angle, what is the uh, number for a right angle? 90 degrees. So I'm not talking about temperature or anything like that. I'm talking about angles. Now, we don't need to get out a protractor or anything in this class to measure the angles. We just will be working with some basic concepts. So I just did the first one. If the sun is directly overhead, can you point directly overhead, by the way? No, like actually do it. Come on, guys. Let's get enthusiastic about it. Um, what? So see where my arm is and see the ground. What angle am I making with the ground, with my arm and the ground? That's a 90 degree angle. Let me draw a picture if you can't figure out what's going on here. So this person is standing on the ground and they look straight up. There's that 90 degree angle. So if the sun is literally directly over your head, that's 90 degrees. Um, you guys just watched the eclipse hopefully a couple days ago. Did you look directly over your head? Yeah. No, if you did look directly over your head, you didn't see the eclipse because it wasn't directly over your head. Do you guys remember about where you were looking? Yeah, I, I can't say for sure, but it wasn't real near the ground, but it also wasn't straight up. It was probably about like here-ish. So again, if this person um, was to look this way, so it doesn't work out perfect, what angle do you think that would be approximately with the ground? How about this? Why did you say 60? That's a good one. Because like 90, 80, 70, 60, and then it's Yeah. So I'm not going to actually even ask you to do that much work. How about if I did that? How do you know that's 45? Half a 90. I do need you guys to know that straight up is 90. What's straight out, by the way? Zero. This is zero. You do need to know the halfway mark then is 45. And then all I need you to know is that anything lower than 45 is less than 45. So anything less than the halfway is less than 45. Anything bigger than halfway, but not up to 90 is more than 45, less than 90. So I'm not asking you to do some complex math stuff here. Just some basic angles, zero, 90, um, and 45 is about all I need. Um, so the sun will move. Do you guys, oh, wait, we're not there yet. So here is kind of what, um, Remy was already talking about. This is supposed to be representing a flashlight shining down on your desk. In fact, do you guys all have flashlights on you right this very moment? You do. Why don't you whip them out? 
I need your thumbs. You did I just see a red flashlight? Or do you <gasps> what in the world is that sorcery, Alex? Huh? Uh, easy? I'm gonna have to investigate that. I've never seen such sorcery. All right, hang on, I don't want to be dark in here. As dark as possible without switching my plan. Do you even hold your flashlight at a 90 degree angle above your desk? Oh, ooh, okay. So since you guys, your flashlights are so um hold it so that the, the light shines down at a 90 degree angle. Um, hold it rather close though, not way up there because this is gonna work. Um, what do you notice about that light situation? How bright is it right on your paper? Very bright, should be fairly bright. So um, what I was hoping you would do is maybe hold it about here and you're shining it down, it's pretty darn bright. That's a 90 degree angle. The light beams are making a 90 degree angle with your desk. So they're shooting down and hitting your desk at a 90 degree. We've got a pretty bright light. Now what I want you to do is take your flashlight and kind of keep it at the same height above your desk, but bring it over to the side. What happened to the brightness of the light? It got a little dimmer, but how much area did it cover? Now it's covering more area. So when the light is directly overhead your desk, hopefully you're seeing a fairly bright circle directly under you. But then when you move it to, by the way, did I go to a, what kind of angle did I go to when I moved it lower? Less than 90, hopefully, okay? Or even if you went to zero, like you put it right on the desk, what then happens to the light? Should, can, well, not that close to the desk. <laughs> not laying on the desk, thank you. But hopefully you see that when you change the angle, the brightness changed. All right, we can be done with our flashlights. Sure, as long as you promise to still pay attention. So this is supposed to be a flashlight shining straight down. Hopefully you see what angle is the light hitting again in this picture. That's a 90 degree angle. If you don't see that, please show that 90 degree box there. So this is when the sun is directly overhead. It's hitting at 90 degrees and the light is concentrated. It's concentrated in that small little area. If this was sunlight, that heat would also be concentrated, which would mean when the sun is directly overhead, we get warmer temperatures. And then the next picture, are we ready for that or not yet? Nope, not yet. Sorry, guys. Can you not handle it? Want Alex to flick the light switch for you? No? I like the dark. I can't handle this. If I had to be writing right now, I would not be able to do it. <laughs> then I'd be like my parents in a restaurant looking at the menu. You're like... I can't. I'm embarrassed to do that. I will. I will refuse. Dark restaurants or or bad eyes. Not sure which it is. Here is this guy. Is this uh, still hitting at a ninety degree angle? Forty five. Okay, I'd say about forty five. So it's always hitting the where we care about is where it's hitting the ground. So that's a forty five degree angle. In this case, the light gets spread out. It's less concentrated. So if it's the light is less concentrated, the heat will be less concentrated. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure you guys are well aware that the sun is not always in the same spot, right? Yeah. Please tell me that's true, not just for Alex. You guys all know the sun appears to move in the sky. Okay, phew. And that's what we're going to cover on the next page, too. Yeah, not perfect. Just better than most, Trenton. Can't always get it perfect there. So there are some things.
things that will control how high the sun gets in the sky. Do you guys know some of those things? Like when is the sun in different spots? Huh? Different times of day. That's the first thing we're going to do on the next page. Um, Wait, oh, I just blew it. Yeah, believe it or not, it's not. It is a common misconception. It is something they kind of told you that the sun is directly overhead at noon. It is only directly overhead for like one or two locations, uh, or actually one location every day. Uh, for the rest of us, we can say, we can't say it's directly overhead, but we can say it is the highest in the sky it will get. So time of day is one thing that changes how high the sun gets. Does anybody know what else will change how high or low the sun is? So time of day is one of them. What else controls it? The season. Yeah. So do you guys know? Think of the sun in the winter compared to the summer. When does it feel the strongest? Middle. What? Oh, middle of the day. Okay. Um, I meant in which season though. You're right. In the middle of the day, it does feel stronger. Clearly summer. The sun feels hotter in the summer. Or if we want to talk about feeling hotter, which one do you get sunburned more easily in, the summer or the winter? Summer, clearly. And guess what? That's because the sun is higher in the sky. It's more like when your flashlight was at a higher angle. So we got season, time of day. Do you know the third thing that controls how high the sun gets in the sky? Yeah, your location. If you live in Alaska, the sun stays low. If you get... Um, closer to the equator, the sun gets high in the sky. So on that next page, down the left side, you should see um, three blanks. If you want to fill those in now, you can, or we can fill them out along the way. So one will be time of day, two will be latitude, and three will be season. And I don't think much of this is going to be news to you. So we'll start. If you don't have all three of them written down, you'll get them as we go. So the first one is time of day. Absolutely nothing here is news to you. Sunrise, the sun is lower in the sky, and that's why it's colder at sunrise. Solar noon. So notice I said solar noon. It doesn't happen exactly at clock noon. But solar noon is when the sun is highest in the skies, and that's when we're going to have the most intense, warmest temperatures. And at sunset, we're back to low in the sky and cooler temperatures. That hopefully was not anything new. If you need to go get a drink, you can. All right. And like we said, the next one is latitude, which is what Alex called where you are or your location. Um, in this one. So you can see, so if the sun was over here and because the earth is tilted, um, it depends on where you live, what kind of angle you're going to get. In this case, down here at 23 and a half degrees no, uh, south, that's the place getting the sun directly overhead. And here you can see there's the ground, here's, well, there's the sunlight. In this case, there's the ground and the sunlight. It changes depending on where you are living. Uh, so what do we need to put in our notes for that one? These three bullets. The lower the latitude, the higher the angle. The equator is zero and the altitude of the sun is high all year long. That's one reason the equator is so warm. Also, anybody who's ever gone on vacation somewhere close to the equator or at least closer than us, one thing you may have noticed is how quickly you sunburn. 
Um, even just going to Florida, which isn't just going to Florida, but Florida's even not that close to the equator. It's just closer than us. You will burn much faster in Florida than you do in Buffalo. All right. And just like we said, the last thing is going to be the seasons. And I'm pretty sure you know this already. In the Northern Hemisphere, so where we live, the sun is, is the highest it will ever be in June. That's why it's the start of our summer. We got warm temperatures. It is then the lowest in the sky in December. That's going to be the first day of winter. And again, why one reason why winter is so cold. Wow, it's real dark back here. How are you seeing? You can't possibly. I'm the tears. No baloney. You cannot see back here. All the notes we're going to do for today, we'll pick this back up on Monday, but I do want to um, hand you back your take-home tests. I want to go over them real quick. I'm a little disappointed that the grades on the take-home tests are lower than every other test I've ever given you. Uh, I'm not sure um, why people didn't cheat on this. Um, and when I say cheat, I mean, look up every single answer, whether you looked it up in your notes or on Google or even um, phoned a friend. So hopefully it was just because you were being lazy and not because you were having trouble understanding this. What do you guys think? Was it being lazy or having trouble? Wait, okay. Okay. Um, hopefully... If you had some actual issues understanding it, these next couple of minutes, I'll help you. If not, I need you to see me on your own time to get this stuff a little bit more solidified in your brain. If you remember, this was chapter seven, technically part two, we're doing part one now, but that means when we're done with this chapter, these questions are still fair game on the next test. So I need to make sure you understand this stuff. Remy, did you just raise your hand? You got A for three. Okay, so that was wrong. Uh, I don't remember now off the top of my head. Um, this first one, I do want to talk about this one for a minute because wait, first of all, I want to see why did so many people skip this question? Uh, that was a little sad that everybody just skipped the question that was uh, right at the top. I get it that I did cut off the number one. Um yeah, but it starts at two, right? So that's what I was going with. So yes, the number was missing. And also, if you followed my rules of your number one rule of earth science, you would have read those words and you would have realized it was a question. 
If you see me wandering here, it's because I'm trying to find my answer key so we can do this quickly. Um, but I got a lot of papers on my desk. There we go. All right, so number one. Oh, by the way, you should still double check your grade, uh, how I crafted it because as always, I could have made a mistake. Uh, the answer to number one was C. Remember, air goes clockwise around a high pressure, counterclockwise around a low, and it goes from a high pressure to a low pressure. Number two is B, clockwise and out of a high pressure. Number three is A, um, warm and dry. The warm is the T, the dry is the C. And number four, when you used the air temperature of 29 and a difference of six, that comes out to 60% relative humidity. Number five is C and six is A. Any of those on the front page that I didn't already go over that you want me to explain? All right, then skipping over to the next page. I didn't get my paper. Oh, I'm sorry, here it is. So, okay, your front page is good. Anybody else not get theirs? Did I forget? Okay. Uh, number seven is D. Number eight is C. Nine is B, 10 is A. I do wanna talk about number eight. A lot of people got confused on that one. Um, when we did fronts, remember the two things I said you needed to know about fronts, uh, other than a warm front brings warm air, cold front brings cold air. You need to remember that warm air always goes up and cold air is the one that's gonna sink. And then you need to be able to tell which direction they're moving. So this question wants from X to Y, what would it look like? So to start this one off, I'm going to ask, first of all, which way is the wind blowing? From X to Y or Y to X? X to Y, how'd you know that, Drake? Because these things act like arrows. They point in the direction they're moving. So they're moving that way they're moving from chicago towards buffalo over to letter y so right off the bat you could get rid of some answers i and notice this was my answer key i literally cross off a and d because the winds were pointing the wrong way that left me with b and c which look almost the same the only thing that's different is here the air near Buffalo is going down and here the air near Buffalo is going up. So should Buffalo's air be going up or down? You tell that by, is it warm or cold? So is Buffalo warm in this map right here? It is, how do I know it's warm? Uh, well, the triangles, what about that? Maybe, what about them? No, that triangles are a cold front. So these triangles are pointing at Buffalo. So it means they ha Buffalo has not gotten cold yet. But what we can see is this is the warm front. And because the warm front's going this way, I know it's coming from Buffalo. The warm front's already passed by Buffalo, making Buffalo warm. The cold front hasn't gotten there yet. So this is going to be the answer because the warm air is going up. That is definitely something you need to be able to do. Wind direction, warm air goes up. That's all you gotta, and warm fronts bring warm air, cold fronts bring cold air. Any others on this page that you need a little bit of clarification? All right, on the next page, ooh, number 11. I'm gonna actually walk through that one flat out from scratch because this one was not good in the class. Um, so first of all, we got wind. What do we know about wind? Wind always blows from what to what? Uh-oh. We got wind. Wind always blows from this to this. Um, yes, but we call it high pressure to low pressure. No, I have that in my energy. Okay. Wind always blows from high pressure to low pressure. Remember, I said it blows from high pressure in your butt 
to low pressure in the air, just like a fart. Farts go from high pressure to low pressure. Um, you guys all smiled, but you weren't able to answer it. So then if you don't want to think about farts, remember it some other way. Um, so if it's going from high to low, what kind of temperatures will give us a high pressure, warmer or colder? Okay, how about this? I'll take it back a step. Please put high pressure on your desk. What are you all doing? Pushing down. High pressure means the air is going down. What temperature goes down, warm or cold? Cold. So we know that over the lake is colder, over the land is warmer. Process of elimination. I can get rid of answer A because it says the land is 70, the lake is 72. I want the lake to be colder. Uh, letter B, land is warmer, lake colder. Okay, that might work. Just gonna keep going. C, 70 over the land, 80 over the lake. Nope, that would be opposite. And 70 and 70, what would happen if the temperatures were exactly the same? No wind. Process of elimination tells me that the only time that this could be true. Now, if they did have two that could work, we want to look at the time of day. Is it going to be during the day or at night that the land is warmer than the water? It's got to be during the day. Land heats up faster during the day, but land also cools down faster at night. Um, all right, just to wrap up the rest here, number 12 is D. 13 is C. Uh, 14, hopefully you saw that uh, Utica had the greatest chance of precipitation because the temperature and the dew point were the closest. I did also accept because it's the cloudiest, but please also know the real reason is because temperature and dew point are the closest. Even if there were two that were very cloudy, the mo greatest chance is when they're close. Uh, to unabbreviate that correctly um, and make sure that you read the words because it did say Niagara Falls. A whole pe bunch of people did Utica because that was what the last question asked about. So it is 1020.1. You needed to have that exact. If you didn't put a decimal because you forgot to put it, it's still wrong, even if the numbers were right. Uh, remember that these bubbles show which way this air mass right here is moving. So if it's moving this way, then we read those backwards to find out where they came from. And they all point down to the Gulf of Mexico, except for this one points here. So I would have accepted as long as your X was in one of these shady areas here, not over here. This is too far away. These guys are going this way, not this way. Um, how do I know it was windy here? The What I was looking for is that's where the lines are closest together. I did accept that they had a lot of feathers because that also shows it's windy. Low pressure moves counterclockwise for the last one there. This page was pretty healthy here. Everybody did pretty good. Um, 1009.6 MT and rain. Anybody got questions on those? This is where things went downhill. A and B, why is A? The question said lower relative humidity. It didn't ask why, if it, why it was colder. So it has nothing to do with the cold front. Wanna know why, how I can tell it's less humid at A? There's two good answers. The easiest is that A is cloud free. B is cloudy. Cloudy days are more humid. You just told me that on the last page. The other reason is A is in a CP, so the continental part is telling you it's dry. B is in an MT, the maritime is telling you it's um, humid. So either one of those answers would work. What would did not work is that the cold front already passed by A. That's just telling me it's colder. Doesn't say anything about its humidity. Um, the easiest answer for why C is co uh, colder than D, well, D is in Florida. C's um looks like Pennsylvania. 
Yeah, yeah, your answer hurt my heart. I remember. Farther we from what? Probably you meant to say the equator, but I can't take half answers. Uh, the other one that I did not take, and I have beaten this one into your heads, I thought. A um, whole bunch of people told me C's farther up. Ups that way. Yeah, if it was at the top of the mountain, it would be colder. But I can't tell if it's farther up a mountain from this picture. And the regions would absolutely not accept up instead of north. So that's what I was looking for. I did also say D, this was a stretch, but people are like, D doesn't have any clouds, so it'll be warmer. But then you still got this one wrong. It was, it, it was a mess. And then which way does the weather move? We talked about how in the United States, the weather moves from the west to the east. So this whole pressure system will move towards the east or northeast. Graph, almost everybody did the graph okay, unless the biggest problem was this dot right here. 45 comes in between 50 and 40. I know this seems backwards because it starts at a higher number and goes to a lower number, but 45 is always between 40 and 50, not between 40 and 30. Uh, so that was the biggest problem there. Or people not connecting the dots. You got to connect the dots on a graph. Uh, you guys made question 26 a lot more complicated than it needed to be. But as you can see, we start at a high latitude, low, low number of storms. And you go to a low latitude, high number of storms. Same thing this way. Low latitudes, higher storms, higher latitude, less storms. As latitude increases, number of thunderstorms decrease. What do you do in case of a tornado? Basement works, storm shelter works, go, bathtub works, go under a table, go in a hallway, go under a desk. What does not work is get out of the house. That's a bad idea. If you are outside, your best option, by the way, would be to get in the lowest lying area, like a ditch. Um, you do want to try and find a secure shelter though. Um, I think I gave almost everybody credit there. Um, as long as your answer even remotely made sense, you got it. This one again, guys. Yeah, I know they didn't give you the dew point. You had to figure it out. Hopefully you realize temperature and dew point were exactly the same because there's fog. Fog is telling you temperature and dew point are the same. If you do not understand still some of that stuff, you need to see me. We can find a time to work together. Make sure you do better on this stuff. No homework tonight, guys.